with the lecture five for the serious games course. And we can go. I'll just go next. Is it okay if we use the behind? Is there any or maybe it's easier if you are facing the other way? I'm <laughs> go. I'm okay. Uh, I will tell you how okay, when to <laughs> press next. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, taxonomies. Okay. So what is a taxonomy? Uh, Briefly, it's about uh, organizing and classifying and categorizing uh, items. Uh, it, it was firstly used in biology uh, to categorize uh, species and uh, families of species. And uh, as you can see in the image, it went from uh, the whole, from a, a very generic uh, category to a very specific one. So from the kingdom, from the animal kingdom, to the uh, to a specific animal. Uh, the taxonomy has a broad hierarchical uh, structure, and uh, it's a way to provide search terms for uh, the user. So it's kind of a vocabulary for the user in order to be able to retrieve information more easy. So next. Uh, in games now, uh, in games, taxonomies are used probably in the same way as in biology. So, uh, taxonomies, uh, taxonomy is the name given to a set of methods that provide ways to classify games. Uh, there are various taxonomies, a lot of taxonomies uh, about uh, video games, computer games, serious games, uh, specifically games for health, education. Uh, a heuristic taxonomy is that one. Could you press the yeah? Yeah. So yeah, that's a yeah. heuristic taxonomy actually categorizing all the computer games uh, according to their style. So we have action games, adventure games, uh, what else? And there are some categories. Uh, adventure games. games. Uh, yeah. Yeah, simulation games, and in the end, edu educational games. And the author thinks or believes that serious games is a subcategory of educational games. Okay, so that's so serious games is a subcategory. A subcategory of, of educational games. So that, according to the author, uh, serious <laughs> games, <laughs> serious games are educational games. So, yeah, so you can see an example of, uh, I don't know, probably a, a failed taxonomy. Probably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if we use educational games in a very broad, broad sense, then maybe, maybe <laughs> not. I don't think <laughs> no, so. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. So, yeah, serious games are, are trying to find their way in the games taxonomy. And uh, in this field, uh, Ben Sawyer, the, I can go back to the presentation. Ben Sawyer, the uh, founder of the Serious Games uh, Initiative, has done a lot of work. Uh, actually, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's too big, but yeah, it's okay. Uh, actually, categorizing all, uh, at first, all serious games and then uh, going into specifics, into games for health, games for education, uh, actually constructing several taxonomies uh, about serious games. Uh, links don't want to no, that's okay. click. You don't okay. need to go to this one? No, 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 no. It's okay. okay. Just go to the next slide. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I can't go to the next slide. Uh. So yeah, Ben Sugar is kind of an expert for serious games taxonomies. Work. Yeah, it's hanging. Unfortunately, PowerPoint just froze. <laughs> yeah, 
sorry for that. We'll have to restart. So uh, that link is a, an eight megabyte PDF. No, I see. So maybe that's uh, why with, it froze. Uh, so your taxonomies. That's why. Yeah. It's kind of heavy. So maybe it was trying to load it in the background. Yeah. Okay. It's Excellent. Okay. Uh, so that's also a Ben Sawyer slide. Why do we need a series game taxonomy? I mean, after all, why having a taxonomy? Uh, first of all, it's, as we said before, to form a, a vocabulary in order to be able to communicate with the stakeholders and potential clients in our field. And uh, afterwards is to erase uh, some misconceptions about serious games, that, like the previous one, that all serious games are educational games. So if we have a taxonomy that uh, categorizes all serious games, then we can see that are not only educational games, there are training games, games for health, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then it's about providing a snapshot. So actually to map out, uh, the current state of the serious games industry. And at the same time, to see where the research and development is lacking and which are the gaps, and if we can actually fill the gaps. That's the goal. Next. <coughs> okay, so that's the taxonomy of serious games according to Ben Sawyer. Uh, in the horizontal axis, there is a, and that's the type of games. So we have games for education, but we also have games for health, hardware games, uh, games for training, uh, games for science, production, and games as work. And uh, on the vertical axis, it's the, those are the stakeholders, actually the fields in which those uh, games are used. And then we can see which kind of games per type and per field. So uh, go to the next one. If we actually uh, apply this taxonomy in real games, then we are going to have this figure. So uh, we can see that uh, in education there are a lot of educational games. Actually, that's the highest number. And uh, also in education there are a lot of uh, advert games. Uh, also, there are many advert games in government and, uh, and in governmental and NGO fields and uh, in what else? In games for training as well. So you see that through a taxonomy we actually managed, he actually managed to map out uh, the serious games field and to have actually a snapshot of uh, the whole field by just doing a taxonomy. Mm -hmm. And we can see, of course, and where R&D is lacking, and that's uh, in games for science and uh, production, and of course games as well. Yeah. So now, uh, in one of the papers that uh, we have for today, right? <laughs> uh, Simon's paper. Uh, that's the games for health taxonomy. It's presented uh, in there, and Simon actually builds on top of that. Uh, now, this taxonomy is more focused in a serious games, uh, in a specific serious games field, and uh, it uh, categorizes games for health now uh, according to the stakeholders that it involves, uh, actually the, the, the users, kind of, that's the personal uh, use, 
the professional use, the research and academic use, the public health use, and the function, the, the area of health activity. So the function that uh, they address. So we have prevention, we have uh, rehabilitation, assessment, and uh, training, education. Okay. In the other paper that we have for today, the RSET uh, game research paper, we have typologies, and there are a lot of articles about taxonomies versus typologies, and uh, that's why probably sometimes there are some misconceptions about uh, taxonomies and typologies that are considered to be the same. Uh, in biology or linguistics, they are not the same. Uh, in games, my personal view is that sometimes we can use typologies in order to have taxonomies. So I, at least, yeah, but I have it done. So taxonomies are different, of course. Uh, typologies are different than taxonomies, uh, since uh, they are based on the, no on the notion of an ideal type, a mental construct, and uh, is not something that is found in empirical reality. So we have the partless player typology, and uh, so we construct a mental uh, image of the player. We have the killer, the achiever, the socializer, and the explorer. And that creates a useful heuristic in order to provide a basis for comparison amongst players. Now, the drawbacks are, of course, that those criteria are ad hoc. And they actually, yeah, they are descriptive rather than uh, explanatory or predictive uh, yeah, compared to the taxonomy. And of course, we have the problem of uh, bringing those concepts to life, of reification. That's typologies. Now, taxonomies, as we said, they are based on uh, empirical, empirically observable and measurable characteristics, and uh, they are based in hierarchy more than typologies. Okay. So how to construct a taxonomy? First, we have to determine what we want, the requirements. Then we have to identify the concepts. So what's out there? What's, uh, which kind of taxonomies are out there? Then, of course, we develop a draft. We, uh, yeah, we discuss with users and with experts in the field. We refine the taxonomy, and we go into an iterative design cycle. And after that, we apply the taxonomy to the content in order to check its uh, validity. And of course, we have to always update and maintain the taxonomy since things change constantly, and you have to be up to date. Uh, so let's take an example. Uh, next. We have the Games for Health taxonomy as presented in Simon's paper. Uh, we have, as we said, the area of uh, health activity and uh, the users. Now, uh, press next. Okay. So, let's say that we want to, uh, to construct a new taxonomy more focused than games for health and, uh, and go one step further and we want uh, health games for dementia. So, uh, we determine the requirements that we want a taxonomy for games health for dementia. We identify the concept, go next. And we identify the concept, which means what's the, the, the status quo of uh, taxonomies. And we have this one, and what Simon is suggesting uh, on this paper, uh, that is a categorization according to the health area that uh, the games affect. So we have cognitive, physical, and social slash emotional uh, games. So, we take those two, next, and we also see, we also uh, extract kind of the, the players in this space, in the space of dimension, the space that we want, uh, that's actually our target group. 
that's what we want to, where we want to focus, in which place we want to focus. And so we take those three, those three concepts, and we build a draft taxonomy, which uh, after discussion with experts and users, it's finalized, and that's the final result. So we have the game categories, we have the game types, the game categories resemble a lot like Simon's uh, categorization. The game types uh, are coming from uh, the Games for Health taxonomy. And uh, the player types are our uh, addition to that. And so we're having this final taxonomy, which then, next, we're going to apply to content. So we're going to uh, find all the games in this area, and then we're going to place them in this taxonomy to see if they fit or not, and where R&D is lacking, and not that stuff. Okay. So, we found those games. Those are some popular games, some of them, we feed or we sport, and we place them inside the taxonomy. Yeah, we used a different figure, and we used a table. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I think next. Oh, oh it doesn't see. Okay, you can see the. Uh, yeah, that's okay. There's one sentence down there. Uh, that's okay. So yeah, uh, from the taxonomy, so we can see that there are there aren't a lot of uh, educative. Uh, games, cognitive, physical, or social, emotional, and uh, the the majority of the existing titles are focusing on the cognitive, physical, and social, emotional, uh, cognitive, physical, sorry, uh, functions, and of course uh, the major finding is that there aren't any assessing games. Now, this category should be if in order to actually have the, the validity of the taxonomy, and since there, are, there aren't any games there, we should actually eliminate this uh, game type. But since there is some research in this area, and there are some games that are actually under development right now, we should include this category and just see that there isn't any game in there right now. There will be. So uh, there is potential ground for development. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we focused on a very specific part of serious games and of games for health, and uh, we found all the games in this area, and we managed to organize them in order to have uh, to reach a conclusion about what is going on to map to map it out and then find the problem. Now it's time to solve the problem, to go one step further, and try to solve this problem. So that's why taxonomy is useful. That's, that's a final mm -hmm. OK, thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions? Because it's difficult and it's the, the market is very limited for these kind of games. But yeah, first of all, uh, it's uh, I think it has to do with false negative and false positives. I mean, it's a lot of responsibility, and there are some medical studies, blah blah blah. So if you go into games for health and you, know, you try to assess, that means that you should have. Uh, Go to ethics boards, uh, licenses. And, uh, yeah. So it, it's a lot of responsibility, that means a lot of cost, and probably not so much. We are not like discussing that. So we have a mobile device where we can have a mobile device. 
something you should have a walk on. No. So th this one is the easiest category because you don't have to have the medical yeah, I mean, certifications those are and so on. A repair yeah. boost uh, games on the self. Yeah. So you have Wii Fit. I mean, Wii Fit is a well-being slash entertainment game. Yeah. It, it, it's not a, a game for health. At least, yeah, uh, at first. Mm. <laughs> but if you repurpose it, then you, yeah, you can have, let's say, a physical but preventative game. Yeah, so th this is a, a useful uh, taxonomy in a sense as it highlights the the areas which are under underdeveloped. Yeah, um, it highlights the areas and also the games as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not only about finding uh, where there is uh, where there is a gap, but also predicting. I mean. Right now, if I want to develop a game about uh, whatever, I can actually check related games and check their traits and their characteristics and uh, see if it's a successful game or not. Uh, so if we go deeper into that taxonomy, we could actually predict the, the efficiency of uh, our potential game mm -hmm. by actually comparing it to others. So, yeah. so can't some of the games from that category uh, be used to do the assessment? Be, be used, you mean? So by like some some of those games like Lumo Lumosity and so on, they do yeah, give yeah, you some yeah, yeah. scoring of how you're doing. Yeah, they can be used, of course, but but not in a medical sense, right? Yeah, all, all the the other ones. I mean, uh, Neurotech is doing research mm -hmm. right now, uh, but in a medical sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, a lot of money <laughs> behind that. And clinical, clinical trials. Clinical trials as well. Yeah, that's, that's a difficult part. Yeah, so the, in that category, you can sort of avoid it. Yeah. To most. Well, yeah, I would and here you already have to have some. And that's the hardest. Uh, yeah, that's the hardest, yeah. This one is. Um, uh, this one is just underdeveloped. I mean, it, it's difficult, especially. Uh, it's a specific problem. I mean, for dementia, it's difficult to, to educate someone and to place him in the position of the patient, and, uh, and or to train him. I mean, it's it's not a very specific disease. It has, it has many phases, mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to train someone or to actually uh, provoke uh, empathy, uh, provoke sympathy. So. Mm -hmm. So those are the reasons why this this category is underdeveloped. I, I think it has to do with the uh, disease. Uh, so it, since it's not uh, that it, it doesn't have just it has actually many symptoms. So uh, this one just uh, addresses the, this game addresses one symptom. Dementia. You, you can't give a clear overall picture to the player about dementia and uh, train him mm -hmm. or educate him. Uh, and again, I think it's, it has to do with the cost. You could have a game like that, you could have an educated game about, about dementia, but in the end, why? If there isn't any social uh, benefit uh, so if there isn't any NGO or any government involved, mm -hmm. then a company why bothering uh, mm -hmm. throwing away money? <laughs> so how? Yeah, because uh, we we're talking here about the the patients mostly, mm -hmm. but how yeah. how that fits into the taxonomy? How that fits? 
that's actually a, an extra layer on top of the taxonomy. That's extra information. The, the main taxonomy part is the game categories and the game types. Mm -hmm. Now, the player types is just an addition in order to, uh, to, to check, you know, to see where those game types, uh, to, what they address and uh, who could be potential player. Mm -hmm. So it's not a 100% part of the taxonomy, but it's an extra layer of information. So it's kind of a, a typology inside the, the, the taxonomy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said that, you know, sometimes you could use typologies as an extra part mm -hmm. of taxonomies. But yeah, again, we're playing with the words right now. So no. Well, Typology taxonomy. I mean, uh, in the end, it's a classification process. Both of them. So, yeah, uh, it's just a layer of information in this case. So, if we look at that that space, mm -hmm. it would be a. Um, Three-dimensional, because mm -hmm. we have the the games yeah. categories and the game types, yep. and then on top of that you would have the you would have because for example for educate educational games, mm -hmm. you actually quite involved. You can address mm -hmm. all four of the um, of the audiences, mm -hmm. um, which makes it kind of difficult to discuss. Like when when you discussing this yep. this column, yep. it's kind of difficult to discuss that column in isolation. You have to view it from that par par particular audience perspective. Yeah. So, for example, for dementia patients, educational games for them is a different story to their families. For example, family yeah. members that's, yeah, that's to educate them of what dementia yeah. is and and so on. Uh, that was my point. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, those. Uh, this game just addresses one uh, type of player. So it's about, uh, I think it's about the public. So it's, mm -hmm. so it's just so for you. Raising awareness of, yeah. Yeah, that. raising awareness. Mm. But again, there, there can be educated games about dementia patients, uh, professionals, caregivers. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's why. But yeah, since there isn't any motive. <laughs> Motivation about. So, what else are the taxonomies useful? Why we create taxonomies? Why you know we have the taxonomies at all? I think it's good to define the different terms for various things. So people prefer to people write their own paper and or something. You know what they mean instead of having different meanings for different terms. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes it easier to communicate. Uh, what your game is, uh, what you want to do. To organize the vocabulary and mm. to, to yes, uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah, because if you have a client that believes that, you know, a serious game is only an educational game, like that, <laughs> yeah. then you're screwed. <laughs> it, 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 it's <laughs> you that uh, I want a serious game from you, and you develop, let's say, a game for training. <laughs> no, it's not an game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it can be really useful. What's your impression about the taxonomy for games in general? Do you think there's a lot of agreement or something uh, that needs more development? Uh, yeah, I don't think that there is agreement from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. But that's good. And you can find many, many taxonomies. I think that's good. And you can choose. The one that suits your needs and you find best and not that one. <laughs> not the but as long as you have explained your taxonomy, then yeah, and as can long as it. as you can justify why you are using the taxonomy that you are using, mm -hmm. and as long as you can justify its validity, then I think it's okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't use the the first taxonomy mm -hmm. just because. Yeah. Our interest was the rest of the hmm? What? Our interest was the rest of the I mean, 
the, the first one. The first one. Yeah. I think it mm. can be really hard mm. to. Uh, it's it's really hard to actually yeah create a taxonomy a generic taxonomy for for computer games. Mm. Because some games are really mixed. So yeah. Yeah, and still there. Are. But perhaps those words don't have to describe the game as a whole, but just various aspects of it, and uh, yeah, yeah, and you can use all of them to describe the. Yeah, game I mean, a, a game can fall into two categories. So that, yeah. uh, as you saw at the last figure, I mean, I had with it was a preventative game and mm -hmm. uh, it was a game for rehabilitation at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you have to. <coughs> find the characters, the traits, the characteristics. And then if a game has both or you know three or four characteristics, then that's that's okay. That's so a game can be to be two D and be a serious game. Two D adventure game and serious game. So So what else the taxonomy Clarifies so the vocabulary and to, to to make it possible to communicate and discuss. But what else? What do you think? Yeah, so the, the in this taxonomy the action games have lots of uh, first person shooters and third person shooters and um, maze games, slide shooters, platformers. Everything is bundled up as a single action category. Um, and then the second one are strategy games, and so on. Um, yeah, but I, I, still, I wouldn't dismiss this taxonomy at once. I mean, sometimes uh, you may find taxonomies that are not updated. So if uh, if you talk about series games uh, 10 or 15 years ago, th there was a notion that you know series games are only educational games. But if this guy updates the taxonomy, mm. he may find this, or, or other errors as well. And so updating the taxonomy is also important. Because things change. Serious game change, everything changes. So yeah, taxonomy should change as well. Yeah, so I think that the, the more, even more important than the vocabulary is the conceptualization of, of terms, of things, of, mm. of what links to what. Like with this taxonomy, the problem is that Thinking about serious games being a subcategory of educational games is just doesn't fit. It's wrong. Uh, we don't normally think like that. We it, it doesn't fit into our conceptual model. Uh, so the the taxonomies allow us to clarify of what those relationships between the concepts are and how we think about certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think what what is for what they're thinking here is that he's thinking about serious educational games, mm, meaning yeah. that there are some educational games that might not be completely serious. I mean, they might be for motivation. So, so these are the, <laughs> so you can think of it that way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Might be, yeah. It's missing quite a lot of uh, different types of serious games in any case, though. Yeah, it's the educational games, so the entire health. That's what they say here. Uh, so yeah. serious games? Could be. Yeah. Well, you, in that case, you could just go to other games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if they aren't necessarily educational, they could be. Well, in that setting, I mean, he's yeah. yeah. talking about games that you can use for training mm. and uh, education. Now you have child education, programming games, and then mm -hmm. the rest, he just calls them serious games. Yeah. Right. Which is example, just. That you have in mind, but that could be one interpretation of the same thing. That's right. In case it would kind of be a, a summary. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you consider that this year's gain is the super class, then well, the higher will actually turn. Uh, it can't. Yeah. And in the description, it says that it, it actually includes other games. That's right. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit difficult. Um, uh, yeah. But, I mean, that might be the nature of the uh, taxonomy, which is sort of heuristic based, which is inferred from other publications Still, as well. If, if he follows the, the, the construction procedure, mm -hmm. then he could uh, actually uh, advise, uh, he could actually ask you know, an expert about that, about serious games, a serious games expert, and yes. you know, change it, update it. Well, the problem is where are the other categories of serious gaming in that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Well, prominent for the older categories of serious game in 2006. Maybe, yeah. Maybe the market was underdeveloped and there was yeah, not much uh, happening. And two years, I mean, it is quite a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Six years ago. Yeah, also, the, the educational games seems quite underdeveloped itself. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Programming games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. You know if there are any uh, newly updated taxonomies for. Heuristics. Uh, heuristic taxonomy for uh, video games in general. Everything. No, that, that, that's the only. One. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen so far. But. Uh, yeah, I think it's difficult, for, uh, at least for computer games. Mm -hmm. the, uh, ben Sawyer's taxonomy for serious games is yeah it's okay but he's constantly updating the taxonomy yeah. constantly every every year and, and that's the Ben Sawyer's taxonomy this version is from 2008 so yeah it has changed a lot but for video games in general no I haven't found a good one that that was yeah I like this one because of the serious game. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there is also some advantages of having the taxonomy being uh, designed in such a way that um, the categories are more self-contained in a mm -hmm. sense that mm -hmm. they capture certain essence of, of a particular concept. Uh, if if you have um, classes like this, uh, where you say, well, you have action games, and then you have strategy games, can you have an action strategy game, and then which category it belongs to, or it belongs to both? Uh, so can you have, you know, how, how isolating those those terms are, and if they are not that um, isolating, then the usefulness of this conceptualization might not be the best. Unless you're kind of talking about strategy games in isolation of what characteristics strategy games have compared to action games, yeah. right? So it might be useful for dissecting games in a particular perspective, but then it's not that useful to actually as a tool for classifying games um, if games kind of cross belong to different uh, genres or categories. Um, whereas if you have taxonomies which are more or less um, um, self-contained, so for example here, yeah, um, here it's, it's easier to have class yeah. which focuses on cognition and has nothing to do with physical or focuses on physical. Um, and so on. So certain, and also like if, if you have a game which is preventive for those uh, potential patients and uh, and public, that that is you know th those categories are more orthogonal mm -hmm. and they sort of uh, cut the space in a more clear fashion. So then it's easier to to categorize games into one of those boxes and then talk about it in isolation without 
cross-contaminating the vocabulary. Well, I would say that the difficulty is this kind of all that in all the other ways. Um, mm. Educational part of the other ways. And the game would be addressing both the educational part and the preventive or the reputation. That's and right. So, that so is true. Why not be completely. No, completely it's not. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to have a completely orthogonal categories and concepts. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do interfere and they do overlap. But it's, it's good if that. Um, if there is some uh, clusters, yeah, well exactly. Clusters. Uh, yeah. I suppose that's why it's good to have different types of taxonomies. That's uh, one might be better in one case, etc. Yeah, exactly. And the visualization is another part of the taxonomy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have just a tree structure, uh, that means that uh, a category is distinct, is completely apart, you know, from the other one, mm -hmm. uh, compared to that one, that means that the game can be both cognitive and physical and social. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there are. I mean, there are games like that. Yeah. Uh, we fit or we sport. We sport is we fit is both uh, physical and social, something like that. Yeah. So it, it's the way that you actually visualize the taxonomy sometimes. So you, you have you know two axes and. Stuff like that, and one dimensional taxonomy, you may lose something. You may lose yeah, a relationship between two games. Or, okay. okay. So, yeah, we should maybe we should have a short break. Um, and then talk a little bit about the articles and talk about the projects after after this.